All right, what I want to look at now basically is the basics of getting the gun adjusted to the fluid. Now, in this segment, we're dealing strictly with the water base. Again, what I'm using is a pigmented finish, just so you can see it well. Now, that said, let's think about, we're going to talk about texture. And that's the texture of the finish as it goes on. Now, one of the things with a water base versus a solvent, water has surface tension. Um, that's, that's why you can fill a water glass slightly over the rim. That's the reason water will beat up on a car. Um, that's, as we put it in our finish, that's the reason skeeters can walk across the top of water. It has surface tension. And if you've ever done a belly flopper, you understand surface tension. So what happens with a water base as opposed to a solvent base is a water base kind of has a delayed reaction. What am I talking about? When you apply a water base, you're not going to get a dead smooth film instantly. Solvent, you can. And the reason for that is, is we've got to first understand what we're doing when we're spraying something. Spraying is simply depositing millions of little droplets of fluid onto a surface and having them run together and form a film. Because of that surface tension, the water base takes a little bit to come together. If you think about if you think about water base again, like zillions of little BBs, and those BBs go down on the surface, and then they have to come together and form the film. Solvents, again, the, the resins and solvents are completely dissolved. They're in a liquid form, like a shellac. So they lay down and the solvent evaporates out and you have your film. And again, you can, you can thin it as thin as you want. The key to a water-based finish is getting it the texture right as you apply it. If you apply it what we call dry, meaning you don't have enough fluid on here, it's not going to run together and level out. It's going to be coarse. So what you have to know is that when you're putting it on, you have it right. Let's talk about, let's think about texture and compare it to sandpaper. If you're spraying and you're getting a 36 grit texture or you're getting even an 80 grit texture, you're a little too rough. If, on the other hand, you spray it and you're getting a, what would be like a 120 grit or a 180 grit, it's going to lay out for you. Now, we're going to see more on that because this paint is kind of hard to show you. But, one of the things that we have to deal with is we have to deal with the amount of pressure and the amount of fluid. Because they go hand in hand because now we have to deal with what is called atomization. Atomization is how we break up that fluid into as fine a texture as possible. Now that's a big key. Now of course speed, how fast you go and whatever, that all affects your film. But in, and I'm using this gravity fed just because I can release the trigger and I don't have any noise. Here's what I'm going to show you. If I take this gravity fed and I open this fluid way up and I reduce my pressure way down, what I'm going to get is kind of a coarse texture. I'm getting it on here, 
but I can see it's, it's kind of globbed a lot. I'm going to grab the Erlex and show you a little bit better example of this. Because with the Erlex, I have a fixed set amount of pressure. It's a two stage. When I get too much fluid, I'm splattered. It's like it's splattered on here. Not what we want. Now the texture on this, it's kind of, and I realize it may be hard to see, isn't all that bad. But I'm splattered. When I break it up a little more, add just a little bit more, I'm adding a little bit more pressure, and I'm reducing my fluid, I'm able to get a super fine pattern. All those little BBs are much closer together. I have less surface texture. So that allows me to lay it out smooth. That's a big key. So the key is it's 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 a balance between your air pressure and your fluid. Again, the case of an you know, compressed air, I can turn the pressure way up and do a big large area. This is probably a 10 by 10 fan. When I get into the fixed pressure, as with the Erlex, here's the secret. Reduce the fluid. If we balance the fluid, it's, we talked about spraying and, and uh, atomization like the water hose. If you've got low water pressure and you put a whole bunch of water through it, it just, you know, you got big globs of water. On the other hand, if you can't change the pressure and you put a little bit of water through it, you can break it up. Let's take a look. Now what I'm going to do with this Erlex is I'm going to, you're going to see me take the fluid nozzle and I'm actually going to take it way in. I'll experiment a little bit. Now, now, as you can see, what's happening here is I'm able to get a much finer texture by reducing the amount of fluid because I can't change the pressure. Makes a huge difference. So what I want you to get out of this segment is that if you're not getting a smooth, fine pattern, if you, then you probably the best place to go is to drop the fluid amount of fluid, particularly in a fixed pressure system like a tur one of the turbines. In the case, you know, like this turbine here, it, it has an, you know, it, ha it has a variable pressure. And we're going to look at this when we look at turbines and we look at the difference in the stages of them. But the whole key here is how well we atomize it. Very simple. And the finer we can lay that film on, the smoother it's going to be. All right. Again, atomization. Break it up. If you can't increase the pressure, lower, reduce the fluid. But remember something. In the case of the air gun, compressed air gun, I can increase that pressure way up there. But as you increase pressure, you're also going to increase overspray. The amount of 
material is going to get into the air. So the, the, you want to play with this and get a balance. And as we go through other projects, go, we're going to look at all of this.